In this video, I'm going to discuss some more tools that we have available for modifying existing entities in LibreCAD drawings. So in a previous video, we covered move, rotate, scale, mirror, move and rotate, rotate to, revert direction. And in another video, we covered the trim, the trim to, and the lengthen. So what we're going to look at in this video is the offset one. So before I can use that tool, I need to um, draw something that I can offset. So I'm going to just draw a circle. Um, from here, put a circle on the diagram there. Okay, now I want to use the offset tool. So I'm going to choose offset and it says select an entity to create the offset of. I'm going to select that circle and you could select multiple entities if you've got multiple things that you want to do. And then, uh, then you press enter to start creating your offset. Now notice at the top here you've got a, a you can specify the distance for the offset. In this case I've specified it as 20 millimeters and then it's asking me to specify the direction of the offset and I have two options. I can either make my offset in this in the case of a circle I can make that offset bigger by 20 millimeters if I was to click on the outside of the circle or if I was to click on the inside of the circle I would be making the offset smaller by 20 millimeters. So I'm going to choose this one. And now you can see I have two circles, um, the original circle and the new circle that is now currently selected. If I press escape, you can see the two circles, the smaller one offset by 20 millimeters from the larger one. Okay, so that's the, the offset tool. The next one then is the bevel tool. Okay, so I'm going to need to, before I do that, I'm going to need to draw a rectangle in this case. So let me draw a rectangle. Okay, and I want to use the bevel tool. And bevel. And notice over here that you can specify two different lengths. I'm going to set them both the same to start with. Let's make them both 30 to start with so that we can see the effect. Okay. And then it asks me to select the first entity, so I'm going to select this horizontal line. And then I'm going to select as the second entity the vertical line. And it cuts them off with a straight line. That is called a bevel. And the distance from where the corner was to where the corner is is 30 millimeters because that's what we specified. And the same over here. What would happen if they were different? Well, let's make it 10 and 30. Okay, so it's asking me to specify the first entity. Notice that line 1 is specified as 10, so I'm going to select the vertical line as line 1. And then my second entity, I'm going to select the horizontal line. And can you see now that the gap between where the corner was and where the corner is on the vertical line, line 1, is 10 millimeters, whereas the gap between where the corner was and the corner on the horizontal line, which was line 2, is 30 millimeters. So we've got a non-symmetrical bevel. This is a symmetrical bevel because it's got it's cut off by 30 millimeters on both lines. This one is non-symmetrical because it only cut off 10 millimeters on this line, but 30 millimeters on that line. That is a bevel tool. All right, I'm going to just delete this one. And I'm going to draw a new rectangle. And then I'm going to demonstrate the fillet tool. Okay. And the fillet tool is quite similar to the bevel, but instead of cutting a corner off with a straight line, it cuts it off with a with a curve, with a um, an arc of a given radius. So we can specify the radius over here. I think I'm going to make it a little bit smaller than 50. Let's take 30. Okay. And again, it's asking me to specify the first entity, so I'm going to select the horizontal line. And then the second entity, I'm going to select the vertical line. Now, as you can see, as I move my cursor around, um, that little uh, sample arc jumps around a little bit. Okay, So you need to be careful not to click on the wrong side of your second entity. You need to click on the correct side so that you get the kind of arc that you want, the kind of fillet that you want. And if I click over here, Um, on this line, but kind of close to the line, then we get a fillet, a rounded corner. Okay, I can make that. This is kind of on the on the outside. Um, 
of that corner depending on what you want you can have it um, yeah, depending on the drawing it might be on the outside it might be on the inside okay then let's look at one other thing um, I'm gonna just draw two separate lines okay and they don't have to be necessarily at right angles to each other okay and then I'm gonna do the fillet again okay I'm gonna leave that well actually I'm gonna make that a little bigger let's make it 50 but this time I'm going to untick the box that says trim okay and what is the effect that that has well it's asking me to specify the first entity so I'm choosing that entity and then the second entity okay I'm hovering over this line but again you know as you move around you can see where it's going to draw that fillet arc arc so make sure that you're going, going to get it in the right place and when I click here sorry, let me click notice how it's drawn in the arc but it hasn't trimmed off the pointy bit on the end it's left it there that is because we had this unticked okay and if I select that, it hasn't even split the line there at all. We've still got those two lines that are full. So in general, most of the time with bevels and with fillets, you want to make sure that you untick, or you, that, you, that the box, so let's go back to fillet, that this trim box is, is ticked. You mostly want to have that. But it is possible sometimes that if you don't want to trim off that remainder. Okay, so then let's look at another tool. What's the next one? Um, so we've looked at bevel, we've looked at fillet. Let's look at the divide tool. Okay, now, so to do this, I'm going to draw something slightly different. I'm going to delete all of this thing. I'm going to put in a circle, which we will put over here, something like that kind of diameter. And then I'm going to draw two lines that are tangent to the circle. So we have two options, well, a number of different options for drawing tangent um, lines but one of the easiest to use is this tangent PC and the tangent PC the P stands for a point and the C stands for a circle okay so I'm going to choose that and then it says first of all it says specify a point so I'm going to specify a point somewhere randomly up here and then it says select a circle arc or ellipse so I'm going to select this circle and can you see how it's going to draw a line that is tangent to that circle so I click and I've now got a line and then it's still the same tool is selected so it's asking me to specify another point I'm going to put another point down here somewhere and choose the same circle okay and select and escape out of that so now I've got a circle with two lines that are tangent to that circle now I don't actually want this part of the arc of the circle I only want to keep that part but at the moment that thing is a whole circle so I can't kind of delete that I think otherwise I, I don't have what I needed okay so one way to deal with this is this tool called the divide tool this is a tool for cutting entities so I select that and it says specify the entity to cut so I want to cut the circle okay so I'm going to select the circle and then it says specify the cutting point so I'm going to turn off snap to grid and turn on snap to end points and I can snap then to the end point of that line and I click now that circle is cut at that point it's a bit difficult to tell because it's only cut in one place so if I select this it still looks like I'm selecting the whole circle because I am it's just that that circle now has a little cut in it over there but if we do this process again so I choose divide I choose the circle I want to divide and now instead of cutting it at this point where I've already cut it I'm going to cut it at the end point of this other line select that now what I've done is I've cut the circle into two pieces. There is the right-hand piece and there's the left-hand piece. And if I only want to keep the left-hand arc, I can select the right-hand arc, press delete, and now I've got kind of what looks like a fillet. But depending on what you know and where you're measuring from, oftentimes it's easier to draw the circle like this than to draw the tangent lines and then to delete the part of the arc that you don't want by using the divide tool to split the circle into two pieces and then deleting the piece that you don't want. So that then is the divide tool. All right, let's look at the stretch tool next. And to do this, I'm going to use start with a rectangle. I'm going to put in a rectangle. 
I'm going to go back to snapping to the grid and I'm going to put in a rectangle somewhere there. Okay, now I'm going to choose the stretch tool. Okay, and it asks me to specify the first corner. So I'm going to specify now a rectangle by specifying a, two different corners such that that rectangle um, selects the part of this drawing that I want to stretch. So let's say I want to stretch this bottom corner out towards the right. Okay, so I'm going to select a point. Um, inside the rectangle and then it says select a second corner point so I'm going to select somewhere out here. Now it doesn't really matter exactly where you select as long as you are selecting the, the part of the entity that you want to stretch. So I'm going to select over here and then it says specify the reference point. Um, so I'm going to select a point on the grid and then it says specify a target point and as you can see wherever I select as the target point, this point of the rectangle is going to get moved out of out to there by the same relative amount. And these two entities, the vertical line and the horizontal line, are going to get stretched to match that. So let me select a point over here. And now my rectangle doesn't look like a rectangle anymore at all. It looks like a kite. So that then is the stretch tool. The next uh, tool then is the, the properties and the attributes. I'm going to look at those. I'm going to show you those now. Okay, They're quite similar. So let's choose the properties tool. Okay, And then I select an entity. And it shows me some properties of that entity. Okay, Now in this particular case, it's not that helpful. So let me just do something else. Let's quickly draw a circle again. And I'm going to put in a circle there. Okay. And I'm going to then go and look at the properties of that circle. Okay. And you can see now that it's showing me the properties or the attributes of the circle about which layer it's on, what the pen color, the width, and the, and the, and the line type is. That they are defined by the layers. But it's also telling me about the geometry of the circle. And I can change that. So that 98.994, maybe actually that was supposed to be 60. I can change that and select OK. And the circle is now has a radius of exactly 60. I can also use this to move it around. Okay, So I go to Properties and I select the circle and I can change the X value to 500 and the Y value to 800 and OK. And my circle has jumped completely. Okay. And then the last tool I want to just quickly show you in this video is the Explode tool. Okay. Um, the Explode tool takes a grouped entity and splits it up into its individual components. So, for example, this rectangle, okay, when I select it, it selects the whole thing. Okay. It's selecting it as a single entity. Although it's made up of four lines, it is treated as a block, as a single entity. But if I decide I want to change that, okay, I can use the Explode tool, and it says select the, the Select to Explode block, and I can select this block, okay, and press Enter. And now it doesn't look like it's any different, except that if I select one of the lines, I'm only selecting an individual line. It's not selecting the whole block or the four lines as a single entity. I, it's treating them each as individual lines. So I can select any one of those. Okay, and that is then the Explode tool. All right, thank you for watching.